Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me well? Good morning. Is my voice clear? Okay, perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to have this session today uh, with uh, Professor Renem Kashwani. Um, it's, uh, it's our first of many sessions and collaborations uh, with uh, Dr. Renem. Uh, so first uh, of all, um, just to tell you, my name is Mahinoor Okta, I'm the Regional Publishing and Training Manager for the MIR region, and I'll be moderating the session today with Dr. Ghanem. Uh, so today's workshop will be about the research and development for civil engineering industry. Um, it will uh, take a total of uh, one hour. Uh, we'll start with a presentation by Dr. Ghanem, then we'll take uh, all of the attendees' questions. So if you can uh, please write your questions in the chat part or the questions part, and I'll be reading your questions to Dr. Ghanem by the end of the session. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Ghanem, um, today aiming with this session for uh, to explore the research and development opportunities within the civil engineering industry. Uh, we'll be focusing on innovative approaches and resources that's provided by Emerald and ICE. Uh, the content will include um, um, the introduction uh, uh, for the ICE resources, uh, and uh, Dr. Renem will be uh, uh, talking about the recent advancements and the challenges in the civil engineering research and development. Um, so, Dr. Renem, uh, Professor Renem Kashwani, is the advisor of the Society of Engineering, SOE. Um, and just to give you a brief bio uh, about Dr. Ghanem for uh, those who don't know him, um, uh, Dr. Ghanem Kashwani is a UAE national renowned as a, a professor of civil engineering practice. He holds a prestigious PhD in civil engineering from the esteemed uh, Harriet Watt University in Scotland, UK. Uh, Dr. Ghanem's uh, immense is underscored by his uh, status as a fellow chartered civil engineer, uh, uh, CE, uh, uh, CE, uh, CENG uh, FIC of the esteemed Institution of Civil Engineers, ICE, UK. Also, uh, his accolade as a fellow of the Energy Institute, uh, FEI, UK, Dr. Ghanem, as uh, erudition extends further as a chartered environmentalist uh, and a chartered manager um, and his educational voyage uh, encompasses bachelor's and master's degrees in civil engineering from the esteemed American University in Sharjah along, uh, alongside an MBA confer uh, uh, conferred by the distinguished University of Wales Trinity St. Davis uh, in UK. Uh, Dr. Ghanem, it is a great pleasure uh, to have you today for this session and we are truly looking forward uh, to know uh, all about the impact of the research and the in the development of uh, the civil engineering industry uh, and we are very proud to have you today. Uh, the session will be recorded. Uh, and the recording uh, will be shared automatically via webinar for uh, all the attendees. And also there will be a complimentary uh, certificate uh, of attendance that you will receive on your email within 24 hours after the session. Uh, so Dr. Ghanem, if you would like to share your uh, uh, screen and share your presentation with us. Okay. Uh, first of all, good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is uh, Ghan Kashwani. First of all, I need to thank the wonderful team of Emerald, all of them. And uh, as they say that this is, inshallah, not the last lecture. Uh, it is uh, the beginning of, uh, inshallah, wonderful series. Uh, I don't know how many and the number of attendees. It is, uh, as I said in the beginning, this platform is new to me. I'm used to other platforms. So um, to all who attend, you know, thanks and welcome. And our topic today um, is about civil engineering and R&D. 
And as I said, I, I was very, very privileged and honored to be selected as Emerald Ambassador. And as you know, that Emerald have been uh, uh, moving uh, uh, in the right uh, uh, direction for publication for many, many years. And uh, you know, recently, uh, they purchased all the ICE journal, and ICE is the Institute of Civil Engineering, where I'm a fellow with them. So this has given me a great and honor and pleasure uh, to to be part of it, and this is why I select this topic. It is about research development in civil engineering. So maybe the topic a little bit technical, but uh, for all the audience, uh, I'll try to give the stories and examples uh, so that to make it uh, very smooth. So I'll start sharing my screen. First of all, my voice is clear. Yes, sir. It's it's very clear. Okay. So let's first the sharing the screen. Let's see. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. So actually, the attendance, uh, the registrations exceeded the hundreds of uh, registrations, and the attendees, uh, the attendance is keep increasing by, by the second. Okay. So. Uh, can Can you see my slide? Uh -huh. uh, no, not yet. Okay. Let me stop sharing again and. Do sharing again here. So share the screen. Okay. Why is that coming? Okay. Tell us what the R and D and civil engineering. So by profession, I'm an academic, and I do like R and D, and I do like civil engineering. And today we'll see why R and D is important. And why, for example, publication, why you need a publication journal to develop the uh, civil engineer and how it is important. So today we have uh, around 14 points. We'll go through it. And these 14 points, it will do about the research in civil engineering, how it evolved, uh, the evolution, the key area, the technology, the future, the role of different stakeholders, the gap between different parties. So today we'll go to different points and let's see how the idea of R&D and civil engineering. So first of all, uh, let's just say the introduction to research in civil engineering. First of all, civil engineering as engineering discipline, it is the oldest engineering that the people they know. The debate is between military engineering and civil, but you know, most of people they know that civil engineering is the oldest one. If you see the pyramids, you see uh, all the empires start from buildings. And the definition of civil engineering, you will be surprised, is the art, you know, of using natural resource for the benefit of human mankind. And this is you know, something very interesting that we define something very scientific as an art. And I, I like this definition, is to utilize the available resource. And I usually uh, I, I summarize civil engineering, engineering three words, affordability, access, accessibility, and availability. This is all about civil engineering. If the civil engineering project, either in structure, geotechnical, uh, water, material, doesn't contain this, the uh, triple A, then uh, it is not impactful because the purpose of engineering to be impact. So what about uh, the R&D, research and development? Research and development, it is the same thing also. It is all about uh, impacting people. R&D research in general, as it uh, comes from three things, curiosity, necessity, and uh, improvement and the questioning. So this is how R&D improve. First of all, necessity, and this is why most of R&D come from military background. Uh, second thing is the curiosity, the question, like Newton asking why the apple have been fall. Yeah, and third one, the imagination. As Einstein said, that uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. And this is how you can see in the civil engineering, the improvement of civil engineering have been with the building materials. I'll give you an explanation. When the human being, he, uh, he discovered, for example, uh, any new material, the improvement in the whole infrastructure have been developed. And this is very important that the development of civil engineering is highly, highly dependent on the uh, civil engineering and especially building materials. So once we discover the wood, then first of all the stone, the wood, then the concrete, then the reinforcement concrete, all the infrastructure have been developed. We start having high rise building and everything. So this is now the beginning of the relation between R&D and civil engineering. The more I discover, 
the more I can implement civil engineering, the more I can develop my infrastructure. So improvement in R&D, improvement in civil engineering, improvement in infrastructure. And let me share you an information. Civil engineers saves more lives than medical doctors under R&D, they say. Simply by the wastewater water treatment uh, discovery the plants. Because many people have been suffered from the hygiene issue and they passed away. And this is a fact information. And I usually say that this is all by R&D. That the backbone of civil engineering is not the building material itself. No, it is not the structure. It is not the design. It is the R&D, the uh, research that happened before that. And to do the uh, other, we give the example about the pyramids and uh, to the sky scarabers uh, and the birds. How these material have been developed? I'll give you an example in the steel. So before the idea, after we discovered the concrete, even in the Roman uh, era, the building was uh, expanding horizontally, not vertically. However, in France, when they discovered the reinforcement concrete, they said, well, we can now go vertically. And this is why now, in our days, the 3D uh, printing are expanding only uh, horizontally more than vertically because still we don't discover any additive manufacture to go vertically. Yet, with the discovery of the elevator, that uh, made the human life easier to do, go vertically for the older skyscraper. And this is, again, a, one of the best examples how the civil engineering are uh, improving through the infrastructure. Now, now, it is very important, we are talking about sustainability and resilience in the uh, civil engineering. Currently, there is a word that is very associated with civil engineering, and I highly uh, recommend you to put it in your note. Circular economy. Circular economy is a very important word. We need to do it, okay, to advance civil engineering. Why is that? Because most of the waste now ha happened because of civil engineering. And the research that shows to us that we need to do circular economy. So R&D, it is not only evolving and also can anticipating in the future. And we use, and it will help us also for optimization, not only in the building and transportation, no, it is in the whole system infrastructure. And most of the waste uh, rate in the infrastructure is the concrete. And please get this another note, concrete, is the second material are used after water, or they call it sand. And this is show you how many it, it is important. I mean, water security now is one of the most important goal in the system developed goals. For me, utilizing concrete in the right way is one also of the most important system goals for the human mind and for the earth, because it's used a lot. And due to that, our R&D, we need to consider uh, the risk assessment and measurement for the whole cycle. Now, as we said, uh, civil engineering is related to anything with the civil uh, society. We talk about structure engineering, uh, transportation, uh, geotechnical, uh, environmental, and all the aspects. Let's say the structure, we give example, we give example how the building have been improvement. What about transportation? How civil engineers? And I will give you a nice story here about um, Henry Ford's when he decided to do the traffic and transportation. The purpose of transportation and the vehicles was environmental because uh, you know there was a lot of horses and there was a lot of dirt because of the horses on the street. And that was you know causing a lot of disease and because of the feces of the horses. So transportation and the vehicle system have been do, uh, you know, uh, doing that to save people's life. And this is why I like, you know, one of the reasons why I enroll in civil engineering, because you can see the impact directly in the people. You know, anything you will you'll do it, it will be directly there. And for example, now we talk about 3D print, uh, printing. 3D printing is not a very new technology. 
It was in the 80s with NASA. When they go to the space, they want to reduce the weight for the astronaut so that they do the 3D printing while they are launching the rocket. However, civil engineers, they said, okay, why we cannot do there in the Earth? But now we go to the R&D. R&D, if we want to summarize R&D in one sentence, uh, take this note. Lab to market for society. Because there is many invention, many idea that uh, as a professors we publish, but it is not ready for the market. Forget about it. So it should be lab to market for society. And this is why if we go back to history between Nikola and Tesla, Edison was much uh, Tesla as a scientist was much better than Edison, although they are not civil, but I'm talking about the concept. But Edison as a market is very important. Having R&D skills for all civil engineering is very important. I highly advise the people who civil engineering now to read books about entrepreneurship. Uh, they read uh, boot camps to attend. Also people in the university, they should go and accept this uh, uh, free program that usually the university they have through the incubation. Let's go to the geotechnical. So geotechnical, you know, uh, uh, it was one of the many reasons that uh, people, they were not, you know, uh, it's accumulated from the structural engineering. After we have this high uh, building, high rise buildings, we didn't know how our soil can absorb this kind of stress, you know, and this is why we have the famous example unitary uh, Biza tower. So we need a new engineering systems to uh, occupy that. So we start having a new kind of foundation, uh, hollow foundation, and also with the earthquake, you know, this is another critical point, how our buildings can sustain earthquakes. And this is a new things have been appear in the future, like dumbers. The idea of dumbers was not there. Now, with any two tsunami and earthquake, there is dumbers, and uh, that uh, saved a lot of life. And going back to Visa Tower, just a minute, There is a documentary, I remember they said, now because most of the tourists, they are coming in this area. If they want to fix it, they can fix it, by the way, but they don't want. They want to keep this inclined so that people, they can come and they can, you know, it's generate money through tourism. So they balance doing that. Uh, go to environmental. No environmental for me until now, waste treatment and water security. This is it for me. This is very important. Because we don't have, again, what our role in R&D civil engineering, because as I said today, if, if you'll go with any new idea, these three words, research and development civil engineering, summarize the three words, uh, availability, affordability, accessibility. So if you have an R&D civil engineering, remember these three pillars. Applying here in the environmental, like in water security, we don't have access to water here, especially in the Gulf area, you know. This is a main challenge. Waste treatment, uh, uh, it is very challenging. And uh, one of the things of the waste treatment is construction waste and food waste. And both of them, as we mentioned in the beginning, we use uh, circular uh, economy. But I use my colleague, Dr. Rashid, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, analogy. He said, and instead of focusing in the waste, treatment and the new methodology, we need to think about the root cause, why there is too much waste. It is like the person who's going to the gym, he wants to burn a lot of calories. Before going, you can you know, do a lot of exercise and use a lot of uh, a new technique. But the question, why, why there is a lot of uh, too much calories in the beginning? So this is usually what I say and when it comes for environmental. Okay, sustainable development. We need to differentiate between what sustainability and sustainable development. These two are not the same. Sustainability is concept. It is uh, something for long term that consists of uh, economic, consists of uh, social and uh, uh, economic uh, and social uh, and uh, environmental, the three pillars. And it is just, uh, a concept system development is more about process 
uh, what I need to process. So usually when you say that, okay, let's do, have a sustainable uh, plan. I prefer to use sustainable development because when you say the word development, we have one, two, three, two race, two sustainability. We have governance, whereas we call it Arabic Hawkam. So I usually prefer the word sustainable development. Now, uh, as I said, when you, the holistic approach, uh, what we need in our R&D, holistic approach. We miss a circular economy, we call it gradle to gradle or gradle to grave. So you have, and also life cycle. What do you mean life cycle assessment? Like I use this concrete. I study the embedded energy and the emission from aggregate until have been demolished. This is what you need to do it as a holistic eye. Then uh, the renewable energy and the infrastructure, many people, they don't know that civil engineering play a critical role in the renewable uh, uh, energies. Why? Most of the wind tunnels are fixed by the concrete platform. Even, by the way, for the space, for the rocket, the launching, the pad launching, is also by civil engineering. And this is all I said, it started about thinking and then design. In my area, materials, I usually say we can use natural materials. Uh, like in the Gulf, we have a lot of palm, nakhil. We, we can use a lot of their natural uh, fibers, cellulose fibers, and we mix it on our building materials as people who are doing in the before in the past, so that we can reduce the environmental impact. Okay. What about technology? You know, this is very important. Uh, uh, give me a minute. that we have let's compare the technology and other um, area or industry C communication or telecommunication you can see that they are moving really as a high rocket but if you compare it with construction we are very slow and I remember reading a McKinsey reporting that why construction they have this thing and the main reason of that construction industry this is another note guys if you can take it it is very fixed fragmented industry we have subcontractor we have contractor we have client and this is why we have the slow progress in it what about the technology that we can uh, have it we have the AI digital twin BIM how we can do it or how we can improve it my idea here guys about civil engineering now if you see now most of the university they have something called digital civil engineering and I advise all the people who work in an R&D uh, that to balance between the basic and the original that you study the concrete design and steel but you need to study the new technology like BIM, the 10 dimension, digital twin. And this is why I'm saying that because the old method for example, surveying is cannot be survived. I can't use total station now, no. I need to use a drone. I need to use laser. This is very important guys to know. The case study of uh, research. There is, there is a sound in the background yeah sorry for that it is my neighbor uh, okay is it much better now uh yeah but it's still uh it will be in the recording so if we can okay uh just give me uh okay. take your uh, time okay sorry for that the offices are new offices here so <laughs> Okay. Uh, for the case study, we have the impact assessment. So we talk about the life assessment. Impact assessment, this is a very important topic. We measure how to measure the impact. And in civil engineering, our role as R&D not finished once we deliver the building or infrastructure, no, the operation. So this is the construction and the operation. And one of the uh, 
information that people they don't know construction industry make their profit from uh, maintenance not from construction people they will be surprised and this is why we need to as a r d to have the life cycle and the impact assessment of it uh, in uae we have many uh, example of smart city also Mandar city and recently we have expo uh, i hope that you visit expo it was a world event and i hope that um, we show how we can have smart and effective planning and i said our role affordable accessible uh, available uh, solution r d or collaborative when it comes r d it is not one man show remember that please nobody is uh, the master in the show or in the play here no you need the funding agency the government you need the the research and professor from the university you need uh, other stakeholders the private sector private public partnership is the backbone for any r d because private sector they are ready to take the risk and you see how the r d have been developed in the uh, in the history it was by the private sector because in the public sector there is a lot of uh, rules uh, you know to make to approve but private sector they you know their governance is much easier to implement so this is why i'm saying we need funding agency we need the private sector and we need also the uh, the people because as i said it is from uh, uh, lab to a market for society so but and we need to know our key player for each one the challenge and opportunities i believe that the main challenge of r d here in uh, civil engineering is to choose the right technology you know there is a lot of technology but in civil engineering choose something is suitable so it is not only ch uh, choosing the right technology it is the suitable technology uh, for example we have the suitable technology that suits uae it is different than suitable technology that suits uh, uh, egypt for example you know because there is different priorities here okay however another point here don't have full independence on the ai and machine learning i know that generative ai now for example i heard one of my students he was saying professor Adam, now ai if i go to concrete with ai he will do the design for me in two minutes why should i study concrete design i said yes you're right but in any there is general rule in ai if you put something that doesn't make sense it will give you nonsense so you need to have the sense and this is why i'm saying that in the curriculum we need to teach the basic to understand sometimes some numbers will not make sense i don't care if it is the best ai in the world simply doesn't make sense and i am with using ai i am with the generative this is remind me in the 80s when people were panicking about the calculator the same thing and it will come the, well it is about how to adapt and there is a stereotype or an idea that civil engineering will be no longer wanted this is a myth i'm hearing this if you go to books from the 20 from the 30 people they are saying civil engineering it will stay i guarantee that but with what a different format okay role of the government we talk about the ppe uh, public private partnership and we talk about the government agency in civil engineering my idea here uh, to follow a model in europe this model called uh, innovation partnership where some government will deal with industry and academia for example let's say and this is, uh, exists in europe government of belgium for example and netherlands they work with some industry company or mexican creed and with two universities to develop uh, a new concrete that will be less footprint and they have five years we can do this in our region here okay and here also play the role of the publication that will say like like Imran. And this is why we need Imran that when they 
did the agreement with the ICE, that was a breakthrough and very innovative. I cannot remember many journals do that because they are targeting not only academia, they understand that now it is a collaborative effort. So I salute uh, Emerald for doing that because this is what we call thinking out from the box. Okay, now the word implementation, okay, how we can the industry and academia gap, this industry academia gap have been there from beginning, that until they ask how to fill the gap, I usually answer this by involvement, involvement and involvement and involvement, that if the industry are not involved in academia, they will be independent from with the consultant company. If academia will not go to the industry and they're waiting for the industry, nobody will come. So we need people to fill the gap. And as we said, everyone can play this role by doing this webinar, by having this kind of uh, journal that have case studies. So the more involvement, we fill the gap for better impact. I think this is maybe my last slide about the future. We talk about digitizing and automation. And we said that digitizing and automation is important. However, we don't forget the human factor in it. Uh, infrastructure, if simply I can summarize better R&D, better civil engineering, better infrastructure. The word resilience, uh, what I learned and from COVID and Corona, Resilience is the new sustainability. This is another sentence, please write it. Resilience is the new sustainability. This is a very important point that we need to uh, put it in our infrastructure. There is many things with the transportation, uh, like autonomous car, and this is things are coming. But as I start with the 3A, I will end it with the 3A. All the solution and infrastructure should be affordable, available, accessible. Okay, and uh, yeah, in the end, don't forget the ethical part. Akhlaqiyat al mihna As a civil engineer, we have ethics to be committed to. Okay, and uh, please, one mistake of civil engineers can even cause many deaths. If you remember what happened in Turkey and Syria with the earthquake, how many buildings have been collapsed for poor design? Don't forget that. And this is what I'm saying. Don't take R&D and AI and what you do it for granted. Make sure that you do your uh, homework. And also, if you have some data, uh, make sure that there's some privacy. And by the way, I'll give you a story here, another story. That civil engineer helped you, the US to control Corona. You'll ask me how. So in Corona, they take the sample of the sewage and they can determine, you know, the most area are vulnerable so that they do better uh, isolation. But this information also private, so we have ethical um, commitment towards this. Conclusion, uh, R&D is very important. There is many topics, self-healing concrete, transportation. However, let's focus about durability resilience and as I said uh, it is we learn from the past I mean what the purpose of R&D we said it is from lab to market for society but scientific research in general is to understand the universe law to improve life for everybody not human race from uh, to our uh, generation now and in the future by this, I finish my presentation and thank you for question. I'm waiting for your Q&A. Thank you so much, Dr. Renim, for this amazing, uh, interesting session. And um, I would like to uh, recode uh, some of the uh, phrases that really uh, uh, caught my attention that it's very Im important, the research for the civil engineering, because when you're Im 
improving the research and development. It means that you're improving the civil engineering industry and practitioners, of course, which means improving the infrastructure for any country or any region. So the focus on uh, this is highly important. And uh, also the resilience is the new sustainability that's also uh, amazing and as a, a an egyptian i love the the example of the pyramids too so um, it was a really interesting and a very informative uh, session so uh, please if you have any questions you can write it in the qua uh, in the chat part um, and i'll read it to uh, dr Ghanim. Uh, so we have actually questions with us um, uh, from Dr. Abdullah Khan. He's sending, uh, what is the difference between resilient structure and a conventional structure as uh, conventional structures are also designed to sustain natural disasters? Shall I say it again? Uh, Dr. Abdullah is asking uh, uh, what is the difference uh, uh, between resilient structure and the conventional structures uh, as the conventional structures are also designed to sustain natural disasters. Uh, Dr. Ghanem. Professor Ghanem, we can hear you now. Can you so, hear me? Yes. Uh, shall I uh, shall I say the question again? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Can I say the question again? Yes, we can hear you, Doctor Ghanem. Hello. Hello? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Holistic. So it is all the infrastructure, okay? And it can bounce back. When we say resilient, we have three parts. Absorb the shock, recover, and the rebound. This is the three parts. Okay, it is not only to sustain, it's the ability to recover and to be operating in the system. So it is just uh, a big umbrella when you say resilient infrastructure. I hope this is uh, answer your question, doctor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghanem. Dr. Ghanem, can you hear me? No, I cannot hear. <laughs> uh. Let me see. Hello? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. So there is another question uh, that uh, by uh, that's for us. I think that uh, it's a common question uh, for the civil engineering industry. Uh, what are some emerging trends or technologies that, from your point of view, you will believe? that it will significant, uh, significantly impact the future of the civil engineering? Yeah, digital twin. Please, all of you work on digital twin. Uh, what is digital twin? Yes, digital twin that you have, it is, if you Google it, if, if you have something physical, you have a digital uh, life example and digital form. For example, in Florida, I like to give example, make life easier. I was in Florida. Florida, they have flooding. So when coming flooding, they do simulation, muhaka, and digital twin. So they know where is a vulnerable area. So they put the emergency team so that they can save life. The digital twin is the new big thing. It is the big thing in civil engineering. Please learn it. Besides finite element in all structure, but go for digital twin. Uh... Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ghanim. Uh, there is also another question. Uh, how can researchers 
uh, effectively collaborate with industry professionals to address three world challenges in the civil engineering. Yeah, uh, apprenticeship again. Another word, apprenticeship. At the middle, mehniya. University, they need to use apprenticeship. This apprenticeship uh, that you go and to see the industrial needs, and then academic, and then they work on it. So the one word, apprenticeship. Second word is the platform. So now we have a platforms where uh, industry they put their challenge, and university they can take it. If you can create this platform, it exists in UAE and Oman, many country. They call it the national portals or uh, like that. You put the uh, the industry they put their challenge, the academy they put their challenge, and then we do the matchmaking. So apprenticeship and the platforms. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghanem. Um So. Um, from your point of view, uh, what are the uh, most important key considerations when you're conducting an impactful research in the field of civil engineering? What are the impactful uh, pillars or criteria that uh, uh, you need to focus on when you're conducting a research in the civil engineering? Yeah, uh, yes, as I said, three things, affordable, accessible, uh, available. Uh, very simple. This is the more thing. My solution is accessible for everybody, affordable by everybody, and available for sustainability. Uh, and available for? Available in terms of resource. For example, I give new materials. Okay, This material, new concrete, should be accessible, so it is easy to collect and manufacture. Available, so it is available for everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, affordable, affordable that everybody can do. So affordable, available, accessible. This is the rule on civil engineering solution. Okay, and I think feasible too, like it's feasible yeah, to be is, applied, yeah. Yeah, this is affordable and accessible, yes, exactly. So I think that uh, some of the researchers I meet uh, in universities, they always tend to do some researches and they have great ideas, but they don't actually uh, estimate the feasibility of the the application of such of conducting such researches so what is your advice here what what would you advise these researchers when they're uh, still uh, on the process of picking the methodologies or the samples or uh, yeah uh, yes exactly very good question start with the need and the value I remember when i said in the beginning what the how r d is moving the history first of all necessity al -hajah. so see where is the need and the value and things will come so the necessity then the curiosity then the imagination but the main drive for any r d necessity al -hajah. and this is you can see what happened in the corona all these vaccines how it emerged in one year before the for the antibiotic filming he take 40 years from his lab to the market uh, yeah, the necessity, of course, it's the yes. main drive for research. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and, and, and as we can see now, the main drive for research is sustainability and environmental awareness. So I think this is the main drive in research in all subjects, actually, not only civil engineering. Uh, so uh, based on this, uh, I know, of course, you have examples for some successful research topics or projects that you have uh, that have resulted in uh, uh, practical applications uh, or solutions within the industry of civil engineering, maybe you've experienced? Sorry, can you repeat the question? So uh, I think based on this the discussion, I believe that uh, I know that you uh, uh, supervised a lot of projects and uh, yes. researches, uh, discussed a lot of master's degrees and PhDs. So have you seen some examples of a successful research projects or topics that were actually uh, applied and uh, there was an actual successful uh, practical applications or solutions within the industry? Yes, uh, many stories I can share, many stories, you know, but uh, know, let me pick one up. Okay, let's start with the bridge. I like the bridge design. So 
and, and civil engineer you know on construction you know people they like demolition i don't know why you know they said okay this old bridge is demolish it and bring uh, let's build a new one and it has a lot of environmental impact like we have something called particle matter 2.5 and particle matter 10 that uh, can cause cancer so okay. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of uh, demolishing. So we use uh, natural fibers, not only carbon and glass fibers. Usually for strengthening, we use CFRB and GFRB, but we use from the palm, we design uh, uh, cellular fibers. And uh, also from the wood, uh, by the way, wood, it is, uh, it is cellulose fibers also. So we design a sheet and we call it rub and we we give the lifespan for the bridge uh, and it succeed again is this dynamic load for 40 years and the bridge still exists and this is one of the thing and by the way now i for people who work in civil engineering don't depend on the uh, the schedule for maintenance put the sensors you know self there is the concept of smart concrete or smart buildings where you have some sensors that can give you life life data that uh, and this is a start in 2012 i remember in london before the olympian they discovered that most of the bridge are not ready and they were on panic and uh, then they started this idea that okay all the important bridge we put some sensors so that we can know when we need to intervene because sometimes the maintenance by uh, the inspection by the eye uh, is not enough uh, yes i i totally agree with that uh, I believe that ICE is very rich with the researches that's uh, uh, related and impacted on some of the main uh, and uh, very popular monuments and bridges and uh, and projects. Um, so, if you could highlight any of these yes, yes. researches, yeah. Okay, so ICE is the oldest. Institute of all profession. Okay, so usually now we have academic profession, academic certificate, bachelor, master, and PhD. That was well known, but the idea to have professional certificate, shahadat mahaniya, was not there. So in 1818, uh, we have people they came and they have this idea, Thomas Telford and other, and John Smeaton, the first one who was saying uh, use the terminology of civil engineers. They said, okay, let's do a professional bodies for that. So it is the older professional bodies in all majors. So you cannot find a professional bodies old, older than 1818. They are the first one who did the professional bodies uh, and that. And there's many stories uh, to share, but the one uh, that in history of civil engineering, and this is also for the female civil engineers. I don't know how many females we have in this session. Please, please, please. Uh, read the story of Brooklyn Bridge. It's a very touching story, but in the same for Robling, you know, uh, and uh, it shows how uh, women contribute in building this great moment, Brooklyn Bridge. I have been uh, there, and uh, there is a novel, by the way, for it. I highly uh, suggest uh, uh, to read to every. It called the Wife of the Engineer. And it descri uh, describe uh, the engineer wives, yeah, the engineer wives, about Emily Roblin, the one she built the Brooklyn Bridge. And that days they assume that women they cannot do engineering. And this woman proved all the men right, and she was the only one who succeed to continue her father-in-law and husband who they get injured during building the bridge and see completely. So please, for all, any female engineers in general, and especially civil engineer. Uh, I highly suggest to read this novel, The Engineer Wife, or at least you go to YouTube and see the webinar or documentary about Brooklyn Bridge, how Emily Robling is very touching, and at the same time, so how civil engineers play a critical role uh, in the society, part of the infrastructure and part of shaping people life. Uh, thank you, thank you, and I think we can uh, uh, get the 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 link and uh, uh, and uh, share it uh, uh, with the with all the attendants. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I know that we're exceeding the time, but uh, 
we have uh, one last question and uh, of course uh, the engagement was amazing today and uh, i would like to thank all the attendants how, how many things we reach because i didn't see how many things we reach until now uh yeah we have we have uh, like uh, uh i can't see it now because i'm on another browser yeah sure no uh, the questions but i'll send you the list of uh, attendance okay. after the session so um uh, uh, uh last question um sure. how, how do you see the role of the data analytics and the artificial intelligence evolving in the civil engineering research and practice uh, i know that now all the publishers and the research institution uh, as much as uh, the ai have its benefits and and pros of course there is a lot of cons sides of it mm -hmm. so what is the role here of the data analytics and the artificial in, in intelligence uh, as an advantage or an evolving in the civil engineering research and practices? And what is the misuse of the AI sometimes that uh, you are uh, uh, afraid of, or maybe you're encountered any of, of it? Yeah, in uh, one word, over trust AI. Don't over trust AI. Because for example, now let's say an AI, there's many things. And one of them now, the generative AI, the Kalstana you cannot say, for example, no, if I'm not a civil engineer, I go concrete with I, and I said, design for me for a uh, four floor villa. In two minutes, he will give you. خلاص. He said, خلاص. and then I trust all numbers. No, not really. You never know. You need to really go. I'm not against AI. I'm I'm big fan of AI and how to use it and the algorithm and all numerical models. Uh, by the way, there is a famous so all number uh, all uh, it says all numerical models are not real, but it's useful. Okay, what it means that all AI and everything they will help you, but you never know when it uh, uh, you know uh, be, uh, will not be useful or sometimes it will not work. You never you cannot trust. So when using AI, my advice start with the human touch and end with the human touch. Yani before you do design, make sure that we set, we put all the human. And after you get the final product, please view it as a human. This is very, so over trust and like you are driving and you put the driving mood and let AI to, to go. This is maybe work only if you are driving. And also I'm not a big fan of that. Always make sure of the interviews. And also for civil engineering, as I said, this stereotype, oh, civil engineering will be, uh, I mean, uh, not there in the future. Uh, it will be a new of AI and computer, this all old engineering. This, this, is, I mean, this story are repeating itself every 30 years, 40 years. Like in the calculator, Ah, by the way, in the AutoCAD, let's say people in the AutoCAD, before we are doing by the rules, when AutoCAD comes, they said, Khalas, designing and the civil engineering will be vanished. So don't listen to that. It will be evolved and the word reshaping. Yes, reshaping that it will happen. And this is what I'm saying for people who work in the university and the curriculum. Please go and review uh, your curriculum. Okay, I know we have a lot of accreditation, a bit engineering council. However, you need to put this new technique, new, like digital twin we mentioned, BIM. And maybe uh, I, I need to add this last thing in civil engineering, all people are civil engineering and R&D. I, I, I know that I touch about entrepreneurship. I will touch on another point, mental health. Don't underestimate the people who work in the construction because I have been in the site. You're dealing with contractor, subcontractor, labor, the bill of quantity. It's crazy. I'm not okay. Working as an academia, maybe it's more relaxed. But people who work as civil engineers, you need to learn uh, the techniques of the mental health, how to to uh, how to to be relaxed, how to communicate. Otherwise, uh, it will be really hard for you to have a sustainable career. So do that. You know, it is it is not less important than AI. We talk about AI and everything, but. The mental health and civil engineering and the entrepreneur skills, these things are highly emphasized even in the university curriculum. Yeah, I, I, I believe this is a very uh, important advice. I have a lot of uh, friends, they're civil engineers, and I can see how hectic and uh, and, and uh, difficult their job and the role is, uh, and especially the implementation too and the field work. 
so I know it's uh, it's uh, life and energy draining, uh, but I know that they love it too. So I think the good balance is, will have a great, a better impact uh, on their work and their life too. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, everyone they ask their questions. But can I ask a question of uh, from my side? Totally, totally, Doctor. Uh, thank you. So, um, for uh, for it's from the ICE uh, for the ICE resources itself. Uh, how do you see uh, ICE ICE's uh, resources impact uh, on the research uh, uh, industry, research in the civil engineering industry, and the um, uh, uh, pra uh, uh, practice for the practitioners and the companies and the developers, like how they can utilize uh, this uh, uh, rich resources. Uh, what is the impact of ICE on both uh, the research and the practical side or the corporate side yeah in the presentation i was saying that everland they did something no publishing they did before they think out of the box when they went to the ice because ice it is this is my point i want uh, it is not academic journal it is not only it is both for people who are in this area. and by the way if you see most of their article it's based on case studies so if i work in a construction company and I want to see a solution. First of all, before I jump in and I call any consulting, as Ghana, I seriously will do, I go to the ICE and Emerald Journal to find the answer. Okay, this is before. So that even before I go to the consultant, I know the direction of my solution. And this is why it is important. By the way, R&D, and this is where we come for R&D, if I can summarize it, it is mentality also, aqliya. R&D is not should be a PhD or professor. No, anybody can practice R&D. You know, most of people who are really followers in R&D are not PhD holders that I met. I met. The people are really flourishing because this is how you think, you know? So, and the tools are there. It is not like before. We have great publishing, great resources like ICE, Emerald, we can utilize. So this is what I'm saying. The, uh, the, the resources is there and we can utilize it and always balance between industry and academia. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ghanem, for this uh, uh, amazing sessions. And I thank you for thanks to all the attendants for their engagement and rich quest questions and uh, the equally uh, rich uh, and uh, resourceful, resourceful answers. Uh, it's a, it was a pleasure to attend this session, uh, mm -hmm. even though that I'm not from the engineering industry or or even related uh, to it. But I've um, I've understood uh, every uh, slide and every interpretation of uh, the the session and the points of the sessions uh, today. Uh, it's it was a pleasure to collaborate with you, and I'm really looking forward for our coming sessions. Uh, thank you again, and uh, uh, we were honored to host this session uh, with you. And uh, I think that uh, all the attend attendants here are thanking you for this resourceful session, and uh, they are looking forward for our coming sessions. I'm getting questions on when will be the coming session from now. So uh, for mm -hmm. sure, when we uh, set a date and a topic, we will uh, inform all of you uh, and all of our attendants today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghanim, so much. And uh, is there anything else you would like to add? No, so first of all, thank you for, for, your, for the whole team. I mean, you work really hard to arrange that. For, thank you for you and all members. Thank you for all the attendees. Today, I try my best to put some stories and to put uh, some summarizing because uh, you know, sometimes some webinars, I don't want to go very technical. Uh, you know, because we can do that uh, very specific in the future. However, I try to explain the role of R&D from the past to now, how we improve the building materials, how it and what the future challenge. And as I said, R&D and civil engineering, they will be parallel all together. Maybe the civil engineering will reshape it. We mentioned the calculator, the AutoCAD and everything, but civil engineering, inshallah, will stay there and the R&D will be there. 
So it is like a tool that we need to use it in a suitable way. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ghanem. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you will receive the recording of the session and uh, the uh, certificate uh, of attendance from webinar. Uh, thank you so much and uh, and okay, have a great uh, week and uh, Ramadan Kareem to all. Thank you so yeah, much. Shukran, Allah, 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 Allah,